California Bearcats is one of the most successful basketball clubs in the history of Southern California. It's excuse me it's the longest running club in the history of san diego and i really attribute all that success and all the athletes that are playing in college now playing a high level in high school to john wooden Hey, this is Coach Corsi with California Philippines Bearcats. Hope you guys are doing great. We're here at Hawassan Falls, the second falls, and just loving it. It's so beautiful up here. The water is so refreshing. You can see the falls in the background. It's quite beautiful. But I want to share with you John Wooden's vlog number 18, all about true character and his dad. So I hope you enjoy this. Please subscribe. Please like, share, comment, and make sure you hit that notification button so that you can be updated with all my new videos that come out. You can uh, view them right away. So that's it. Hey guys, Coach Corsi, Philippines, Bearcats. Hey, I wanted to uh, go over vlog number 18 today with John Wooden. And I think you're going to enjoy this one. And, and this, is a, this is a great book. I would get this book, my personal best. And I'm going to talk about two things today. One is the advantage of character and, and what he labels as dad. And some of the principles from his father that he passed down. So first thing, character. So leading up to 1962, he realized that he started losing a lot of athletes that couldn't academically apply or get into UCLA. And those athletes, talented athletes, uh, ended up going to other Pac-10 schools, which really affected his program. And it also made him, uh, he, he got very angry. He complained about it to everybody. He wasn't happy. And so for there was a, a, t a time for years that he really complained to the administration, you need to lower your academic requirements, which they refused to do. And then one day he, the light bulb went on and he realized that watching these athletes that he left, that left the program because they couldn't get into UCLA, who went to other Pac-10 schools, he started to see a pattern. Number one, a lot of them became ineligible at those schools academically. Number two, they there was a lot of problems with uh, discipline with those athletes, selfishness, and, and a lot of problems, kids getting kicked off teams, uh, disciplinary actions, and on and on. And these are a lot of the players that he had lost to, to academically not being able to get into UCLA. So he really turned it, he turned a, 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 a thing that he felt was a negative into a positive, and he started to realize that players that were able to qualify to get into UCLA tended to have a higher, not, not all of them, but a higher level of character. And he really feels and believes, and I believe this too, that when you recruit players or when you put your team together, you need to you need to try and find not only talented players, but more importantly, high character athletes. And and that will really change your program. Because you started to see that the players that 
didn't have high academics or high character, that he lost this other schools. He started to see patterns. Number one, he wanted players that were unselfish. He wanted, he wanted every score to be a pass and a score, not one-on-one. -on -one. So, so he felt that players with higher character tended to move the ball more. They tended to, to be smarter on the floor. Not all of them, but tended to be smarter on the floor. They tended to care more about their teammates as well. And so, so he started to see these things and, and he believed that higher character players were more interested in the success of the team than themselves. And, and just get this, this one thing, you need to recruit players that are more interested in the success of the team than the success of themselves. That is the key statement in, in this whole thing. And so he really, he really started to embrace players that were high character, again, very talented, but also were high character athletes. And he, and he really began to realize that how important that high character meant to the success of his team. The second thing, and, and I would again, when you put your team together, like I said earlier, search for players that are talented, that also have high character, and they're good in the class. They tend to share the ball more and care more about their teammates. Number two, his dad. So his dad always told him, and his dad lost the farm and all this stuff, and he never complained. He said, son, you know, no whining, no complaining, no making excuses in life. And he found that before 1962, that he started to do a lot of whining, complaining, and making excuses for his lack of success in the playoffs or with his team and all that. And he really got away from what his dad taught him. And again, during that time before 1962, the light bulb went on and he said, I'm gonna stop complaining, I'm gonna stop whining, I'm gonna stop making excuses and I'm just gonna teach my players to, to we're gonna be the best that we can be we're gonna be the best we can be and that's that's and work hard and have a great attitude and we're not gonna whine we're not gonna play we're not gonna make excuses we're gonna put it all out there on the floor and he says that really changed his teams it changed his coaching philosophy when he decided to just shed it shed the whining complaining and make excuses and I would say to you guys and it's hard I know because I'm there too it's easy to whine complain and make excuses but I would encourage you guys to shed that end it forget it put it put it in the back burner when you catch yourself whining complaining or making excuses just cut it off cut it off and go back to positive we got to work harder we got to work smarter we need to we need to be around positive people. We need to surround ourselves with people like us. If you're around people that are whining, complaining, making excuses, get away from them. Get away from them because they're just a cancer in your life. So he said by 1962, the, the advantage of character and going back to his dad's principles, that he was really ready. His, by 1962, everything was put together that we've been talking about in his videos, and he was ready to really succeed and really enjoy that scoreboard and the success that came to him. 10 national championships in 12 years. And a lot of people asked him, did you ever think after 1962 that you'd win that many championships? And he said, I would have been happy with one. Never anticipated that, but it was all these principles that he put together and he started to do that really brought the success, that, that the massive, massive success, more than any college coach in the history of basketball, just massive success that he had uh, during those years. And I would encourage you guys that if you follow and we're going to get into championships as we go forward talking about the different championship teams. But if you get into these principles, if you dig into this book and really start to follow everything that John Wooden has talked about, you're going to have success on your team, your basketball team. You're going to have success in your business life. If you really begin to follow the principles uh, of John Wooden in this book, My Personal Best, and if you just, he's laid out the game plan. And he's laid out the, the roadmap. And if you, if you dive into the pyramid of success, I guarantee you, you're going to be a successful coach, no matter who you are. So this is something that we all can adopt. We can all, we all can imitate. We can imitate John Wooden. And I've done that my 
entire coaching career is imitated John Wooden. We, at this day, California Bearcats is one of the most successful basketball clubs in the history of Southern California. It's, excuse me, it's the longest running club in the history of San Diego. And I really attribute all that success and all the athletes that are playing in college now, playing a high level in, in high school, to John Wooden. John Wooden, most of it, and of course my college coach Bill Reynolds, but a big part of it is John Wooden. So, so grasp onto this, and it will it will bring dividends for you as a coach, as a mentor, and as a business leader in life. God bless you guys. We love you, and go Bearcats! <laughs>